Great, thank you so much. Um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to um, share the story of electric mobility in Alberta, um, and then specifically our work in the Northwest region. And um, at the end of, of the presentation though, I do hope that you leave with a little bit more of a, a vision and perhaps even some inspiration of how the transition to a low carbon transportation network can inspire engaged and active and resilient communities. What I want to emphasize though is that uh, this is already happening. Alberta has very much been on the leading edge in many ways in the transition to low carbon transportation <coughs> um, and that's across the value chain. I just want to briefly spotlight Bears Paw uh, First Nation. Bears Paw was the first indigenous community in Alberta to host a fast charging, um, fast charging infrastructure. And this was as part of, the, part of the Peaks to Prairies electric vehicle network that I worked on with partners across Southern Alberta. Um, they're also leaders in the deployment of renewable energy with a solar photovoltaic system um, on, on reserve as well. What's really um, inspiring about this particular project is that it blended the opportunity for tourism and economic development as it was co-located with their brand new travel center um, at the gateway to, to Kananaskis, providing opportunity for visitors and residents of Alberta to spend some money, support the business while they charge up. But communities across Alberta are, are also um, rapidly shifting toward this uh, technology. Communities are electrifying machinery, like Innisfail and their, um, uh, <laughs> and their Zamboni. Um, <laughs> transit buses, like the one pictured here in Edmonton, and then municipalities enabling the, impl the uh, implementation and construction of um, fast charging equipment within their municipal jurisdictions. This leadership of communities across Alberta has resulted in Alberta being the province with the highest electric vehicle adoption compared to any, <laughs> compared to any uh, provinces and territories that do not have um, EV incentives. So this is significant. The growth of battery electric vehicle adoption is depicted in this graph. Um, and the adoption of hybrid vehicles, though not shown in the numbers here, is demonstrating uh, equal uh, rate of growth. But what is also true is that the majority of electric vehicle adoption is happening in urban centers. So essentially Calgary and Edmonton. That's where um, uptake of EVs is, is most highly concentrated. Yet some of the most uh, beautiful and most visited locations within this province remain unconnected to electric vehicle networks. Uh, the rural nature of Alberta, and indeed much of Canada, means that the business case for private sector investment in charging infrastructure is frankly uh, quite poor, <laughs> and therefore it's, it's not happening to the degree that, that we'd like to see. So there are major gaps in rural areas, not just within this province, but connecting across Canada. So what it means is that smaller communities in rural regions are unable to benefit from the growing uh, electric vehicle tourism market segment and all the co-benefits that come with that. At the same time though, it should not be the burden of small communities to purchase and own and operate this critical infrastructure um, over the long term. Here you may recognize the Saskatchewan River crossing. This level two charger is available seasonally. So once October hits, the resort shuts down and the parking lot's no longer accessible. Um, it also runs on a diesel generator. So quite a bit more work to be done to support this. So for myself and my organization, um, the opportunity here is about uh, more than simply installing infrastructure to fill a gap on a map. We want to think more strategically about the co-benefits and broader impacts that can result when we think about charging infrastructure as a social good um, or as a community asset. Absolutely, addressing these gaps with equipment, good technology that works is critically important. Um, but there is a lot more value add for communities and for regions when it's done strategically. At uh, my organization, CEA, we believe so strongly in the opportunity for collaborative strategic network design and deployment 
uh, that it's actually the primary focus of our work when it comes to the electric mobility space, and we've been doing a lot of it. <laughs> What's inspired us to support the network design and deployment across Western Canada, and in fact now in Southern Ontario, is that we've seen communities come together and convene around a bold vision. Um, they want to see their rural community and their rural regions become more connected um, in a way that benefits not just drivers passing through, but the communities themselves that host the infrastructure. Um, so what started as a pilot in Southeast BC um, called Accelerate Kootenai has had a ripple effect across rural regions in Western Canada. So when communities in Northwest Alberta, like Hinton and others that I'll, I'll show um, in a couple slides, when they came together and asked for support to replicate a lot of the work that was happening in Southern Alberta, uh, the collaboration with the Energy Futures Lab provided that really incredible opportunity to convene and engage in a, in a way that would help these highly motivated communities create their own vision for the future. So we were really lucky as uh, a collaboration to experience our first uh, sort of creative visioning um, in person in Drayton Valley, days before COVID forced the um, transition over to online collaboration. So we benefited from the expert uh, guidance and facilitation of the Energy Futures Lab. Um, it provided a chance for communities to put their heads together, to clarify gaps and opportunities. You'll see major gap. There's one DCFC, D DC fast charger, but in brackets, not yet installed. So that's where we were at <laughs> at the time of this, um, of this meeting. So we wanted to, to imagine and envision what a network would look like in the, in the Northwest to bring new innovative tourism and economic development opportunities. The co-benefit of that is that we would also facilitate a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions associated with transportation. So our messy initial visioning um, transitioned online, equally messy, but uh, it allowed for a few additional sessions to be facilitated with Energy Futures Lab um, to really clarify the gaps and opportunities, again, to develop a process for network design, modeling, technical assessments. This was the first time that many of these communities had collaborated, period, never mind to convene around an innovative um, vision for the future of electric mobility in their region. So in addition to these that created the foundational um, committee, advisory committee, there were an additional 15 municipal and indigenous communities that have identified sites to fully connect the region. The project is now close to shovel ready. Uh, we have the vision, we have the passion of communities. Uh, we're now entirely focused on unlocking the funding mechanism that will make this happen. For these communities, connecting to drivable markets like Calgary and Edmonton and the 80,000 vehicles currently uh, driving on roads in British Columbia presents an opportunity to diversify economic opportunities and tourism. I mentioned earlier that a transition to the low carbon um, electric mobility network is not just about placing infrastructure in gaps on a map. It's about building a community asset. The challenge of the energy transition and a net zero future really is about how bold we're willing to be in our vision of that future. It's about more connected, collaborative, resilient communities. Our work in the electric mobility space opens conversations about electricity and energy, how we use it, store it, manage it, and a lot of folks in Energy Futures Lab are thinking hard about this. Jacqueline Novogratz from Acumen said, too often we ask ourselves, what is the cost of daring? When we might come to a very different conclusion if we ask ourselves, what is the cost of not daring? What I hope for our work in this space is that we can be daring enough to find the most innovative and impactful opportunities in unsuspecting places. Um, eVenture and the collaboration with Energy Futures Lab has allowed us to do just that. So thank you, not just for this opportunity, but for the innovation and bravery that uh, the Energy Futures Lab facilitates for all of us. Thanks.